Six hundred and ninety thousand. There we go. I can't. I don't know numbers this early in the morning. Got a lot of subscribers though. If you guys have never heard of him, you guys should go subscribe to him though. Before I hit the, let me see. Before I hit the start button. Yeah, right here. Upper echelon. I think this 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 guy has really really cool critical thinking pieces when it comes to video gaming and the industry. Yeah, six hundred and ninety thousand. Stick around here more about the special offer they're providing Said the wrong. entire upper echelon community. All right. Today, I want to talk about a paradigm shift in video games happening over the past number of years in which the industry has evolved to a point where instead of you playing games, the games play you. First off, let me try a bit of a demonstration for this. Pick a number, any number at all. Once you have it, go ahead and multiply that number by three. Feel free to pause the video at any point. Already got it. Yes, there okay. is math in three? this. Three? I picked three. Multiply by three, we got nine. Okay. When finished, finished multiplying it by three, I want you to add six. Okay, uh, 13. And then, wait, 15. Divide this new number 15. by 3 again. Fuck! Just to be sure, I. 15 divided by 3? 5. I don't get the same number. Are we I supposed to get the same number? on screen right now, and you should have sequentially picked a number, multiplied it by 3, added 6 to the answer nice. you got, then divided this new total by 3 with a. Yes, yeah, so I picked 3, multiplied it by 3, got 9, added 6, got 15, divided by 3, got 5. Okay. The final step. Of subtracting the original number that you chose from the beginning, whatever it was, Three. leaving you with so the ultimate two. answer, which is based on whatever you originally picked. Okay, I got two. The answer that you have is two. It's you always two. Remember, whatever it's always you two. wanted, but it's I always can two. predict your answer because your choice never mattered, and it's the always outcome two. was always predetermined. I love that. This is one of these formulas that no matter what you pick, the answer is always the same because what you're doing is you're just you're you're adding to you're multiplying to x. You're adding to the Y, and then you're dividing by Z, and then you subtract X, and it always gives you two. It doesn't matter. This is this is a this is a an algebra equation, by the way. Love that. And he's saying that no matter what you do in the video game, I see where he's going here. No matter what you do in the video game, you will always come to the same conclusion. Real quick, if anyone didn't get the number two as an answer here, you, you fucked up. Wrong. You Not fucked up. Me. Yeah, you, you messed up. <laughs> this is what's called a magician's force, and it's a trick involving mathematics where the steps you fucked up, dude. order sequentially will always result in the number two because you're adding six, then dividing it by three, where multiplication and division cancel each other out. Yep. Another example, a much more simplified example for anyone who didn't want to do all of that, is if I put two cards face down on a table and then ask you to choose one. If you choose left, I say take the left card, and if you choose right, I, I tell you take, take the, the right card, card on the right, saying, "Okay, you chose mine. Now take the card on the left." I did somewhat give you a choice, technically but speaking. It's a fake choice. It's a false really choice. Choose anything that affected the outcome. Mm -hmm. The same thing is now true in modern multiplayer video games, where people can be playing a first-person shooter or a competitive sports game, therefore making a multitude of choices in the process of that. But those choices don't matter, and the outcome is predetermined. That is my premise for today, and that is what I mean when I say games are playing That's you, pretty good. not the other way around. Here's the part where I have to play a clip for context. I've talked about a lot of these things before in separate videos, but collectively analyzing them here requires a bit more depth, and this is Mark Rubin, executive game director and producer at, at Ubisoft, Ubisoft? Okay. giving an explanation for why X Defiant, a recent FPS title released by Ubisoft San Francisco, doesn't use skill-based matchmaking. Oh, interesting. Or, as he calls it, engagement-based matchmaking. Okay, so skill-based matchmaking, also known as oftenly as FBMMM, basically where the game decides that you have a certain skill level uh, after it kind of watches you play for a, for a few matches and then matches you up with people who are equivalent on your skill level. Now, uh, in the olden days, mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty light. Yeah, uh, skill based matchmaking was very light. It didn't intrude too much into the game. It has become something that is. So, in older games, it was it was frequent. Well, it wasn't frequent, but it was possible for you to run into some of the best players in the world in old FPS games. Sometimes you'd just be a random shitter sitting on your couch and you would queue up around the same time and get into a lobby with, you know, face clan members or optic members it would just happen that we're running random pubs they were in a lobby and they were just vibing that is like almost impossible now now what people say is that we don't even have skill based matchmaking in call of duty we have engagement optimized matchmaking and what that means is it's going to send you on a roller coaster you win a game yeah get ready to get shit on for your next three or four games and what they do what that means is they're, they're trying to get you to rechase the, the logic or the the math behind it is that they expect you to rechase the high of getting the win at the beginning 
by making your next few games really hard and then making the game after that, after the few hard games, either narrowly really close or making it so that it's pretty easy and you finally feel like you got to win and you'll want to stay on for a little bit longer. Me personally, I don't like being toyed with by video games. So if I feel like I'm getting shit on in a video game and there's nothing I can do about it, I turn the fucking video game off. Optimized, like engagement optimized matchmaking doesn't sound like it works on someone with a brain. It sounds like it works on someone who wants to be toyed with. Like if you want to be played with, yeah, engagement optimized matchmaking probably works on you. But otherwise, regular skill-based matchmaking, especially normal skill-based matchmaking, the kind that exists in fighting games, because we have it, uh, sounds like it should be fine for all of these types of video games. There's nothing wrong with playing around... There's nothing wrong with playing sk players around your own skill level the vast majority of the time. Even when you're playing a non-ranked environment in a lot of fighting games, it still tries to give you players close enough to your skill level slash rank in the video game. I'm just letting everyone know that now. And if you think skill-based matchmaking is a problem, you're either trying to pub stomp or you are the laziest gamer on the planet who does not want to think while playing the video game and you're playing a multiplayer video game, go play single-player games. You're a baby. You're a bitch. There's nothing wrong with skill-based matchmaking. Whatever Call of Duty has, that engagement-optimized matchmaking shit, that sounds fucking awful. I just want to preface that. More what they call actually engagement-based matchmaking now, uh, where it sort of is like an AI that's monitoring your behavior and going, okay, this person's getting beaten too many times, and we think they might quit, so we're going to make it, the game easier for them and then you'll get a game where you win and then it'll bring you back to the playing against the same people you were playing for. And the, and the thing with all that, besides the whole sort of morality of it, is that I think it creates a stale experience, right? Like you keep playing against the same exact people, not the same exact people specifically, but the same exact type of player. Yep. You lose out on all the fun variety that I think a lot of the old school shooters had. Straight off rip, that already proved my point kind of completely. This is the former executive producer at Infinity Ward for a decade, mind you, who is responsible for some of the best overall entries in the, in the Call of Duty franchise. franchise. He now works at an executive level inside Ubisoft, so he is absolutely qualified to speak on this and has intimate knowledge of how it all works. That's why he said skill-based anyway, matchmaking was really light. A lot more depth it used to. This it used to exist. Skill-based matchmaking existed, but it's not the same. Arts, this is... It roughly 37 million matches and 1.7 million unique players. That's the scary. The is EOMM, Engagement Optimized Matchmaking, which is an evolution... I think this is for Apex Legends, though. ...matchmaking, exactly as Mark Rubin just outlined. In that paper, we can see, quote, EOMM provides a measurable and flexible matchmaking framework. It has well-defined quantitative objectives that can be monitored, evaluated, and improved. Within the EOMM framework, the core building components, skill model, churn model, and graph pairing model are uncoupled so that they can be tuned and replaced independently. Moreover, we can even change the objective function to other core game metrics of interest, such as playtime, retention, or spending. See, this would be really cool if they didn't use it for evil. I feel like this could be really sick if they didn't use it for evil. But of course, they want to use it to steal as much of your time as possible and to steal as much of your money as possible. Unfortunate. EOMM allows one to easily plug in different types of predictive models to achieve the optimization, end quote. Further down, and much more relevant for a later part of the video, quote, so far we have discussed EOMM in one versus one game scenarios. This framework also applies to PVP games that involve teams of players where every component needs to be extended with additional care. The skill model can be simply applied to a team by adding up skills for all team members." End quote. Simplified here, You're really good at shooting? I hope one of your team's team members is really good at movement. Other people. Then it became a targeted system where you would play against people of your same relative skill level. And more recently, it has become a system that is intentionally flexible so as to increase relative player spending and retention. Mm -hmm. Hopefully right. we can see they want to keep you on the game as long as possible. Before but it, it can be used for evil. Brought to you by I don't skip ads. Incogni is all about online privacy and data. You guys got to hold this That's fucking ad. been one of my hobbies lately, owing to how important protecting your data is in a modern digital world. Increasingly so. 
Every single day, your data is at risk of being sold by third-party brokers or accessed without your knowledge and data breaches. Dude, I Some wish that they would at least pay me for selling my data. data. I'm poor, bro. You, you want to leak my, my messages and sell them to Netflix or whatever? Sure. That kind of thing. That's fine. Talk just give me some money, your dude. personal information is absolutely everywhere now, and not just in the archives of companies you know about or signed up for on purpose, but other data firms as well. Who then sell it all across you want to sell internet. my my Everybody data my internet really impossible task to take my internet data to data firms that's fine give me like i don't know give me like 20 bucks dude. come on contact them fight objections and get something removed However, i don't want it removed i don't care just give me some money quickly and easily give me some money the process <laughs> is incredibly simple sign up for the website give them specific legal permission to work on your behalf and let them know what kind of information they'll be having removed after that sit back and just watch them work Aggregating this kind of service lets them do what would otherwise be an all-consuming and nearly impossible task for individuals, which is why so many people have so much information online that they never even know about. Using the link down below in the description and code Echelon at checkout, you'll get 60% off an annual subscription to Incogni. I could go into a lot more depth on this. The services they offer and the value they provide is quite large, considering. But for the sake of time, I have to keep it trimmed. Again, I like that. I appreciate you for keeping it short. Echelon for 60% off your subscription. Big thank you to Incogni for sponsoring the channel. All right. Back so what's next? As bad as that is, it's honestly nothing compared to some of the tactics available. So let's make a pivot here and jump over to this. This is a patent held by Activision Blizzard titled uh -oh. System and Method for Driving Microtransactions in Multiplayer uh -oh. Video Games. And all How did I know it was going to be Blizzard? 13, quote, According to an aspect of the invention, microtransaction engine may arrange matches to influence game-related purchases. And further down, for example, microtransaction engine may match a more expert slash marquee or otherwise influential player, e.g. clan leader, with a junior player to encourage the junior player to make game-related purchases. Yeah, like, a junior okay. player may wish to emulate a marquee player. So I'll player. explain this. I'll explain it in Valorant, right? You, you're like, I don't know, gold or or platinum in valorant and you run into one of the really good valorant players on like an alt account and they know uh, riot knows that those are the valorant pros alt accounts they're not dumb for anyone who's like oh they're playing on alt like blizzard blizzard will never know activision will never know riot will never know riot fucking knows they banned like 18 million of tyler one's accounts you think they don't know motherfucker they know all right so it'll put you in your platinum game or your diamond game with these valorant pros with their really cool weapon skins even on their all or their really cool skins or the characters even on their all to make it look like wow that guy's doing really good and look at all it's like six skins oh my gosh i think that guy's like a pro player he's got these cool skins i should buy them Retaining weapons or it can work if you're dumb i guess by the marquee player other types of pairings and or gr other groupings of players may be used sure, as well. Sure, I guess. That is a very clear indication of what is happening. But for anyone who wants me to spell it out for them, the game can match players together, expert and junior, with the sole intention of causing those with a lower relative skill level to buy, want to buy things. Sure. Thereby totally destroying the integrity of a skill-based hierarchy because fairness of competition is no longer the primary directive. You may subjectively believe that the choices you make in any given match somehow matter, but you also might just be someone with an adequate skill level to where you and your teammates combined, as per the research from Electronic Arts data, are very likely going to lose that particular match, simply as a mechanism to spur one of your teammates to buy, buy a skin. Boxes, <laughs> That's pretty good. Order, as per the discussion with Mark Rubin, for opponents who are likely to quit if they lose another match. As bad as all of that is, it is nothing compared to our next example here, which yet again comes from Activision Blizzard. This time, it's a patent called Methods and Systems for Incentivizing Team Cooperation in Multiplayer Gaming Environments, which sounds innocent enough. That does sound innocent. I want to see the problem. Seven the What's the problem? And find this. Quote, Figure B illustrates a table providing an exemplary list of parameters of a gameplay session that are modified based on a player's skill level and the corresponding experience for players of different skill levels. For example, in a first shooter gaming environment, when a first player aims his weapon at a target, a parameter defining the tolerance for how accurate the player's aim whoa. is to hit the target whoa, is whoa, modified whoa, 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 based on whoa, whoa. the They're making aim assist better for worse players? And worse, for better players? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I read that so fast. Like, the likelihood of you targeting, of you getting the enemy with your gun, 
because you suck, the likelihood of you getting your enemy might be higher than the person who's better than you shooting their gun at you. See, this is evil. Like, this is not okay. This is fucked up. This is why I like fighting games. You can't really do that in a fighting game. You can check the damage on the combo and be like, yo, why did that guy's combo do more damage than mine and we're playing the same character? Oh, because they made his combo do more damage because he's worse than you. We would just quit. We would just quit as fighting game players. Like, we're not dumb. That is insane. target. As shown, column 310 of table 1 lists modifiable parameters. Is that not scary? Degree of accuracy required to hit a target. Column 312 lists the experience of a player having a high skill level, which may be high degree of accuracy required. Column 314 lists experience of a player having a medium skill level, which may be medium degree of accuracy required. And column 316 lists the experience of a player having a low skill level, which may be low degree of accuracy required. End quote. Yeah, see, that's uh, that's up to table really one, scary. See what kinds of systems the game will change with big air quotes there based on the subjective skill level of a player, which include but are not limited to degree of accuracy required to hit the target likelihood of being targeted by an enemy, which means it can kill you whenever it wants to difficulty of an in game bullet puzzle, curve bonus chance of finding power. You guys ever you guys ever um, played a you guys ever played a a first person shooter and you're like dude that bullet like curved and hit me like what the fuck like i was around a corner and that bullet still somehow got me this could be what you're talking about that could be li like people said it even back in like the old days but that's because tracking on bullets was terrible back in the day that's the difference between then and now you said that back then it's because it was shoddy programming you say that now it's because it was optimized programming that's fucking terrifying powerful treasure number of challenging enemies in a single encounter gold earned I'm going to bring up a point on the last one. I'm really bad at Fortnite. Like, I like Fortnite, and it's fun, but I'm pretty bad. So a lot of times, I end up in games where I see, like, big gunfights, and I realize that the vast majority of the people in said gunfight were bad, were, like, bots. They were either bots or, like, really low-skill players, right? And so I'll, I'll get into a gunfight where there's, like, nine people, and I'll kill, like, six of them by myself. And I'm like, but they were all just looking at each other. No one turned to realize they got shot. Like, what's happening? That's, th this is that, but for Epic Games. Earned it's not like wire. just because it was Earned only brought up with EA and with On Blizzard this, that it doesn't exist in other games too. Equipment selection or accuracy of enemy attacks, which can be modified so that enemy attacks never miss the player. And further clarifies that these systems can be changed in a multitude of ways based on the subjectively determined skill. Yo, are you good at the player, game? Every bullet's so hitting you, gang. a longer period of time or purchase more in-game items. Let's put everything together now. Multiplayer competitive games no longer exist in a state of meritocracy. They match players based on engagement above all else, and as per the statements of Mark Rubin, a multi-decade gaming industry executive at different companies who worked on numerous AAA FPS titles, including Call of Duty, the AI will give out wins if it thinks you might be on the verge of quitting. Multiplayer games in general can modify almost any aspect of the core gameplay loop, including how accurate you are, how many enemies target you, or what level of rewards you can get, with the explicit goal of making you, one, stay online, and two, purchase more microtransactions. Videos like this make me very happy that the vast majority of games I've played for most of my life have been single, uh, single versus single, one versus one fighting games. Because you can't really do this in a 1v1 fighting game. It would be very hard. We would Players would very quickly notice. Unless they only narrowly change the parameters on like the hitboxes, the hurtboxes, and, and like combo damage scaling, and like um, damage proration. If they, they'd have to narrowly tweak it. If you tweak it any more than like plus or one, plus, I mean plus or minus 1%, 2%, the nerds of fighting games are gonna fucking notice. It's very hard to do this in a 1v1 fighting game. ...which reverses the paradigm of player choice, culminating in an industry where you no longer play games. Games play you. The same way I can give you a series of questions that seem like choices and force you to end up with a certain particular number, modern video games can give you a series of matches that keep you in the exact same ranked bracket for whatever game it is. They do this to maintain paying customers, they do it to maximize in-game session time, and they can restructure the very fabric of the game itself on a whim to push you in whatever direction is most valuable to them. 
you aren't playing games with consistent rules. You are playing inside a virtual world that changes itself in order to control outcomes. And they have perfected that type of system for years at the expense of all players involved. Well, most of them don't even know what's happening in the first place. Think about it. For every winner, there's a loser. And if an AI determines that you are, let's say, less likely to quit, or you're just a more patient than average player, I don't know, like you're mature and grown up and patient, it can therefore match you with a team and against a team as well, where the outcome is predetermined based on relative skill. I missed most of the video. It was pretty good. Example of the game playing you. It Round was pretty start, good. You feel good. It's a fresh the link. Bag. Yeah, of course. Happen. I think this is a really good video. Reality, that's just not true because the game put you there to lose so that someone else I can send it right up the videos over. would stay online longer. That is the reality of online games. This is a really good video. Anyway, I thought it was a really interesting topic and worthy of a video, but that's it. If you want to support the channel. Like I said, like the, the big problem with these systems is they only work if you're, if you're unaware or don't care. Right. Once you know that a system like this is happening, you just stop playing the game if you care enough. Right. If you're like, I don't want to be toyed with, my time is valuable, then make sure you speak with your time and your wallet. Right. Stop playing the Call of Duties. Stop playing the, the Valorants. Stop playing the Battle Royales with really heavily AI infused uh, matchmaking. Like, it's, it's that simple. Right. Like, I can say that we, want, we need no skill based matchmaking whatsoever, but that's a fool's errand as well, because then. A bunch of lower skilled players, which is the vast majority of people who play video games, won't be having fun for the most part in video games. Do I think that I can tell you from experience, I can look at Twitter and I can tell you this. Players who are worse at fighting games, at least, are so much meaner to players who are good at fighting games than the other way around. Like, I can open my Twitter feed and find a silver player or a gold player. Calling a, a, a master or a diamond player a bully for beating them up when they're playing in Battle Hub. So, like, this master player bullied me in Battle Hub. Like, what a fucking asshole. What a piece of shit. When they're just trying to play the video game the way they know how, and you are too, right? And they were still playing, playing the game with you. They weren't like, ill, silver, peasant, I'll never play against you. Those situations occur more without skill based matchmaking, right? And those situations occur in the Battle Hub. Right, for Street Fighter 6 explicitly because that's the only place in the game with no matchmaking parameters at all whatsoever. But if you take the rest of the games, the game modes, right? If you take the casual match mode and you take the ranked mode, there is stricter, significantly stricter, skill-based matchmaking. If you're in Master Rank, you don't match with anything other than Diamonds. It's like impossible. If you're playing casual, mo casual mode and you're Master Rank or Diamond Rank, you're not going to find anything under Platinum. Like It's like impossible. It will not give you these players. I want to see an, uh, opti an engagement optimized matchmaking where aggressive players are always in the same lobby and campers get nothing but campers and just get crowded in a small circle. Small storm circle and no one's died. I think that would be really funny. I think if they put all the aggressive players together and all the campers together, I think everyone would be happy except the campers, which I mean, well deserved. They don't need happiness. Fuck them. You're sitting in a corner, bitch. I hope you die. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this is the video. It was really good. Uh, if you liked it, you should go like the original video, which I'm going to do, and subscribe to Upper Echelon. This guy's really cool. I like a lot of his opinion pieces and like thought-provoking pieces because he backs them with so much facts, right? Like he had a talk from Mark Rubin, and he had actual patents on the types of engagement-based matchmaking that EA and... What was the other one? That EA and another company used. Like that was That's terrifying. That's scary. right? If you're a multiplayer, mostly and a shooting game or team-based game mostly kind of player, these systems heavily affect you. If you play mostly fighting games or mostly single-player games, these don't matter nearly as much, which is good. All players at Tilted Towers just end up... Wait, all 50 Tilted Tower players just drop at Tilted Towers and end the game before the first ring closes? <laughs> but Tilted Tower players are aggressive. They don't sit and camp usually. Like, people who camp in Fortnite are usually the ones that, like, spawn on the end of the map. They're like, I'm going to spawn at the end of the map, grab a bunch of loot, and then just ride around. <laughs> yeah, this is a good video.